Well, hello again, YouTube. It's Petey, and I'm here in this video. I just wanted to show you what we built this last weekend. So this is a pedal board that we put together out of some scrap wood. It's got a, a is that a eighth, a quarter, quarter inch piece of ply, and then there's a slat here with a couple rubber feet, and then a larger slat that I cut at a bit of an angle. There's two DPDT switches, and there's four battery packs. So DPT dp dp d dp dt dp dt switch is short for double pull double throw which means two switches in one so where in a normal switch you might have uh, two connectors there would be four now this switch has a center off a down on and a up on so you can wire it all different ways it's a called a dp dt on off on switch now I order them even when in a lot of instances I really only need an off on. Uh, so it is what it is. But the batteries are 18650 lithium ion, which is a it's, it's the same battery that's in a Tesla. And there is one, two, three, four. These are all recycled. I get these batteries out of laptop power packs that have been donated to resale stores. I'll buy that laptop power pack, bust it open with the screwdriver, and inside will be eight of these batteries, which are wonderful. Two of them will come out to 8.4 volts, which the guitar pedal is supposed to run off of nine. So we just pretend that maybe our nine volt battery isn't so fresh and run it off of 8.4, and no one knows the difference. So we have this Joyo, Joyo, which is a cheap Chinese guitar pedal. Joyo American Sound is an unbelievably great sounding Fender style amplifier reproduction. So it has volume gain, which is like the dirt, the distortion, uh, low, mid, and high equalizer controls. And then there is a, another um, voice. When you turn the voice, the whole thing gets uh, more upper mid range timbrality. And here is a Zoom G101. We'll talk about that later. So the, the sound comes in, goes through the Fender amp simulator, and then into this Zoom, which is a multi-effector. It's a cheap $49 multi-effector that I absolutely love this thing. Um, I'm only using it for delay or echo effects. It's got a lot of cool stereo. The echoes bounce back and forth. Wow, dude. Hey, where am I? And then this is a... Earthquaker Devices Ghost Echo that I built. And then this is a Behringer German uh, reverb delay. So it's got reverb and echo built into it. So basically the sound comes in and gets fenderized, turned into a fender sound, which is a clean, it's not, it's not uh, rock and roll. It's a, more of a bright, clean just really natural, good sounding. And when it does distort, it's pleasant distortion. There's still a lot of the guitar's natural tonality and harmonics left intact. The zoom uh, makes it echo and gives all kinds of really neato stereo echo effects. So this cable is a custom cable that I made that splits stereo, two channels. So one channel goes to this reverb and the other channel goes to this reverb delay. So the idea with this, you plug this pedal goes into one amp which sits on the right this pedal goes to one amp that sits on the left so you have two amps in stereo this thing does the stereo effect bouncing around and then they each one of those channels gets processed through another reverb and this is a reverb plus an echo so you can get quite a lot of spacey pink floyd type sounds with this pedal board and the neat thing with the zoom g10n um uh, more recently, this someone wrote software for this device. They sold a bunch of different Zoom effects. And they were all under the same computer brain. But they didn't say this when they marketed them. They just said, hey, there's this one's for bass guitar player. This one is for you if you just want reverb and, and echo. This one has amplifier simulations as well as some echoes. And... Uh, what people figured out if you program it you go in there and hack it you can use effects from the entire line 
So that's what I did. I went through and I got rid of anything I didn't want to use, uh, which was a lot of the stuff that came with it. And I just put in all of the really cool echoes and reverbs and modulation. Wah, wah, wah. Up and down, up and down. So yeah, um, right now the way this is programmed, I've got a couple of patches. I've got a Fender and then I got a high gain patch in there that I really love. It's it's modeling the 1980s. ADA was a company, and the ADA made the MP1 preamp, which was a tube. It had a, a, a AX7 vacuum tube in it, and it was a rack mount preamp that had a digital display. It said zero, zero, and it would go up to 99. And I, I saw this guy who reviewed it, and he said, this thing is digital. I, uh, I got rid of it. I bought it thinking it was going to be good. I got it at Guitar Center used, and it was digital. Uh, I got rid of it right away. And it's like, there's a vacuum tube in that thing. Like, they're, they're, yeah, they have a digital memory. You can program the tube to do whatever you want in 99 memory locations. So it's like, an unbelievably great thing because it's a combination of really old technology that sounds fantastic and then newer technology where you have a memory. So that the guy was a goof. But this pedal board, it, the idea with this is it's not like a high gain, like heavy metal, uh, Eddie Van Halen thing. I can put like I have a runoff groove Thunderbird, which is a Marshall amp simulator. You can put that Thunderbird in front of this and oh man does it sound excellent even with this on like a marshall going into a fender <laughs> you just turn the gain down and you set up the eq however you want it so you're not so much using this with a real lot of its natural character you're just using the tone shaping section of it the equalizer if that makes sense and then uh this i can program however i want you know like i this board i could program this with all the amp sims in it and I could use this as a booster. This is a buffered pedal. So it works well for the first pedal. The buffer means it'll, it'll, it'll com accommodate for uh, long cable. It's not so hiss or hum. It just gives it nice stable sound. So I, this could be a flexible board. I could get rid of this cable and run a cable into here and then run a cable from here into there if I wanted to go through both of these, but I won't. This is gonna be a stereo. Uh, for like ambient or I can put a looper in front of it and do looping but uh, the idea with the EQD Ghost Echo that's Earthquaker devices the people who made this pedal it's a spring reverb simulation and it's very nice sounding reverb natural reverb reverberation and it has between 30 milliseconds and 150 milliseconds of delay before before the reverb signal comes in. So your straight guitar sound is unmolested, then this reverberation shows up. So you can play with reverb, but your straight sound is unmolested and it gives you a lot more clarity and definition. So um, there's like panning effects in here where the, the echoes move back and forth. And the idea of Utilizing this as the main stereo separator, the thing that turns the mono signal of the guitar into two signals, uh, is illustrated through the fact that I split it off into two. And then I'm going to run two cables out to two amplifiers. So that's the new pedal board. If I want to do uh, distortion or uh, rock and roll with this, I got two choices. I can turn the gain up on this and use this distortion sound. Actually, three. I can use distortions that are in here, or I can put another pedal in front of it. Put another overdrive. I've got that thunder. I've got a, a lot of dirt boxes here. I'm, I'm building a Rev G3, which is the one that I would really be excited about using. Supposedly, it's high gain, but it also um, sounds like it's got a built-in noise gate. So you, you get that distortion, but there's no hiss and hum when you're not playing. And the Behringer is just a really good sounding reverb that also has an echo in it. This is a great pedal. You think bearing or oh, it's plastic, they're junk. Well, I paid $15 for it used. A guy sold this to me on a Craigslist deal, and he's like, "What? why do you want this thing? And I was like, why do I want it? It's an Echo Box for 15 bucks. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So, yeah, this is the pedal board that we built.
and it's self-contained. The paddles are held down with Velcro strips. I just drilled uh, slots, used a small diameter drill bit and drilled and then went about a centimeter lower but did another bit and then <laughs> drilled it out to be a slot and you would just run the zip tie around. This one had Velcro on the back of it. So I found uh, it only had the male Velcro. I found the female Velcro and that had some adhesive. So it's just, I cleaned it up. The adhesive was used. I cleaned it up and, and applied heat and stuck it down. And it's, it's good, it's not going anywhere. That adhesive that they had used is good stuff. So this is my new portable pedal board. You don't need to plug it in. It's got the batteries down here. And the current draw on this is really low. This is around um, 150 milliamp is what this draws. This draws, I think, 30. No, this is 80. This is 80. And this, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this. But uh, these, two of these batteries will last, I want to say, six to ten times longer than a little 9 volt battery would. And these are rechargeable. So yeah, that's my new pedal board. Um, one side, one amp is this crate amp that I built. I converted it. Um, someone had given me this crate practice amp and I gutted it and put a Class D 100 watt TP, TDA 3116D2 Class D mono 100 watt amplifier board in it with a buffer on the input side. It's fused. There's a three band EQ and a gain control with a master volume. And that amp is a clean amp. It doesn't get dirty. It's a really good sounding, clean, bright amp. It sounds like a Fender. And then this is the other amp. Um, someone had gifted me this. It was called T-Power. And it was a battery operated guitar amp that had a little, it had a power uh, adapter as well. And it runs on 12 volts, 780 milliamps. So it's got a built-in overdrive, there's a high-low input, volume, master volume, treble, middle, bass, and a headphone, and then the blue LED. So I got battery packs back here. There's two more battery packs. This head you can run. Uh, the speaker output is over here, 4 or 8 ohm, 4 or 8 ohm package. Uh, there's two fuses because I built a 7809 voltage regulator into this, so the one out, one little jack there um, is an output. You can run a cable out of this and power pedals. Um, there's a 12 volt input, so if I play this at home, it will bypass the battery pack. There is fuses. Everything I build is fused. There's two little fuse, uh, glass fuses in there. And I didn't show you them, but yeah, this is fused as well. Every pack has a fuse section. There's fuses in there in here and and I think I used uh, this is a 5 amp fuse in here and uh, these are 2 amp fuses. I go a little high you know on the ratings should use a little lower fuse but oh and this also has a booster there's a transistor boost that I built into the low channel there's a low and a high and the low channel has a boost that you can crank it up if you need more gain on the input side which this um this is a really good sounding it's a bright like at the voicing on it like you think these little crappy amps they're, they're not worth their their spit well this one t power guitar amplifier it sounds really good it's really like voxy or fendery like it it has a thing you know and I wanted to um, get a second channel to match um, the, the crate amp. Now, this is lower powered. The, you know, I'm not fooling anybody with this. Ideally, if I was going to do something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this. I have another 100 watt amp that's in a little smaller metal chassis. Uh, that's the same circuitry as what's in the crate amp, 
the partner for this. Uh, but I saw this in my in my pile of amps and, and I dragged it out. It had some sealed lead, a couple of 12 or 6 volt sealed lead acid batteries in, that I had mounted in the chassis that were dead. So I fired it up with a power supply and I could not believe how what I heard, how good it sounded. So I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to box this up. I'm going to box this little T-Power up. The guy who gave this to me died of a heroin overdose. He was a younger guy, and um, he was hanging around for a few years, bumming cigarettes and beers off of me. And finally, I told him, "Look, I I can't fucking support you. You you have to you know come back when you have a job." He came he came knocking on my door, fiending out to get high, and I gave him ten bucks to get some weed, and he never came back. And and then he came back like a couple of weeks later, knocking on my door again, and I, I told him, look it, you know, I've got kids, and you're not one of them. I can't, I can't support you. Come back when you have a job. And then I heard he was hanging out with a guy who was uh, a white supremacist guy who had gotten out of that, and now he had a black girlfriend. There's nothing wrong with that, but it just seemed like that guy might have been a little bit of a piece of work to go from being a white supremacist to having a black girlfriend. I, I don't know. I don't know. It seemed like a unstable is the first word that comes to mind. And then, you know, the fact that the guy had an opiate addiction, not really the guy you want to uh, be hanging around with. And then next thing I hear after that, my old pal Jimmy died from heroin overdose. And this is way back before fentanyl and xylazine, trank dope, all that stuff that's on the streets now. This was just a legitimate heroin overdose. So uh, the T power lives. Jimmy does not. There's your lesson for the day. Don't do drugs. Stay in cool. Stay in school. Hug your pets. That's what I always like to say. So yeah, I will be, I've been talking about, oh, I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to demo the amp. I want to demo this pedal I built for you guys. I am going to do it. I am going to do I'm going to, I, I think what I'll do is I'm going to play around with this thing and see if I can put together a little set. Um, and then I'll probably go outdoors and set it up stereo and um, record it, maybe, maybe, maybe I could. We'll film it, and 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 that'll be the demo rather than me just sitting here in the apartment and do it. I don't know. I I gotta I gotta see how I feel about it. How motivated I get about this thing. I gotta tell you the other day, I how this came about was. I wanted to set up pedals and play through pedals rather than always playing through multi effects, you know. And I did. I set up these pedals, and I, man, I just could not get a good sound just using the pedals. I, I'm like, I am so spoiled playing through these modeling devices. They have a different, they have a different thing, and I, that's my thing. That's what I really love to play through. And I, I was just like not feeling it until I got to this combination right here. I got, I got this set up. And I, I, you know, I went and grabbed another amplifier. I had two amps going, and it was stereo. And I played like um, an improvised set of chordal and finger picking, like melodic stuff, for like a couple hours. I went through all of the patches. I would change patches and then come up with something change patch come up with something and i i felt like i was 17 years old sitting on my bed with my first echo box pedal just tripping out on the on the effects getting off on it and time compressed i got that thing where you know like you don't have a care in the world and and you're a million miles away but you're right there at the same time they call that the zone athletes will call it that and, and it, it was a moment, you know, completely sober.
And those are the moments that make life worth living. All right, you guys. I'll see you soon. I, I'm uh, One way or another, you guys are going to hear this. <laughs> I, I know I've been talking about this for over a month since Hokum, the album of original music. If you have not yet listened to Hokum, that's the album of acoustic guitar music that I recorded in January of this year. I would love for you to listen to Holcomb and, and give me a comment on what you think about the music. If you've never heard any of my music before, there's a playlist of albums of original music of my music that I've recorded. Albums like Minor Technical Difficulties, albums like Digitally Delayed, albums like Slow Malone. Semantical Nightmare is the one that everyone liked. Thin-skinned albums like Hokum are there for you guys to listen to, enjoy the music, and comment. It's no big deal. It's just music. I don't sing. There's no singing. You don't have to worry about that. All right, you guys. Take care of yourselves. If you have one, hug your pets and peace. We'll see you soon. I promise.